find out how the founder of the Conscious Good Network has aligned and connected with a source greater than herself to guide her life's journey. She's passionate about providing media focused on inspirational stories that make a positive impact on the world. And, but really focus on what's the best that can happen. Yeah. Because I do believe that when we are aligned and we are connected, that we are exhibiting the best of the universe. You know, that that, is com that comes through us. And the other piece is um, operating from a place of being of service and wanting to make everyone and everything around us better, easier, you know, reduce suffering versus what's in it for me, you know, how do I gain? During times of chaos, it's critical to be grounded. Watching films and media focused on well-being can provide a foundation of trust to get us through turbulent times and inspire our inner passions. Welcome everyone to the Pollinating the Planet with Love show. I'm your host, Beth Bell, where we talk about life journey lessons and of course those pearls of wisdom we learn along the way. I'd like to introduce today's guest. Trina Wyatt is considered a leader in the conscious media movement with the belief that visual stories have the power to transform society. Trina launched Conscious Good, a community-driven media platform committed to elevating consciousness. Trina has spoken at numerous national events on the topic of media, entertainment, and its impact. She lives in Ojai, California, with her husband, Sasha, two children, Lola and Trust, Trust. and their beloved poodle, Bodhi. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Thank you for having yes, me. Yes, exciting to have you here. I, you're all the way from Ojai, and I was just sort of up in your neighborhood. Yes. And so we're in West Hollywood together at the same time. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Now, you have a lot of accomplishments, and I'm really excited to talk about Conscious Good. But Thank before we do that, yes. <laughs> I always like to go way back in time okay. when you were a little girl. Uh huh. Is this what you thought you were going to be doing? Yes. Okay. Yes, surprisingly, when I was nine, I saw the film Bugsy Malone, Okay, and I just fell in love with moving image and visual stories. Okay. And then when I was in sixth grade, I could write a term paper about any topic of my choosing, and I chose the business of the motion picture industry. You know, definitely at a wanted very to be, young age. Yes. yes, and even though my life kind of took a little twists and turns, this is where I belong. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about the twists and turns because yes. those are always the fun parts and sometimes the scary parts and the fear-filled parts, um, but they get us all to where we are today. That's so, right. Um, what was sort of your first jump into this? Like right away out of out of high school. In high school, you started with film, or how did that all happen? Um, I started, my mom was an actress, and I started on the, you know, theater arts through high school. Um, I, my last performance was freshman year of college, okay. um, and then I knew I wanted to go into business. Um, I told my, fa my father was in business, and uh, when I was in high school looking at colleges, he said, you know, what do you think you want to do in your life? And I said, I think one day I want to run my own business, Dad. And he said, why don't you go into the numbers? Why don't you get your CPA, like your older sister? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to run a business, you need to know the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's not really who I am. I'm, I'm much more of a creative. Um, but I took his advice. And so I think that, that was a difficult thing. I ended up um, straight from college getting a job with one of the big six accounting firms. Okay with this idea, okay, I'll get my CPA, you know, I'll have that to fall back on, my parents will be happy, you know, and then I'll do what I really want to do. Right. <laughs> and so it took a few years after getting my CPA, that's when I went to work at Carolco, and then I wanted to work for a film studio, so I went to Turner Pictures. But I also didn't like... The at the same time, or you... No, no I left. You left. Okay. And yeah, I was recruited to go work at Turner Pictures and start their financial reporting department. And I told the woman who hired me, I said, I will come in and do this for a year and I will work like crazy and do a yeah. great job. But after a year, I want to transfer into one of the creative departments. And they hired me, even though I said that, something I you should probably that. never say in an interview. Yeah. <laughs> and then after a year, they were um, 
the acquisition by Time Warner was announced and they were like hiring freeze, transfer freeze, nobody's going anywhere, we're going through due diligence. And I had talked to some friends in New York and they said, hey, you want to produce? Like, why don't you come produce these mm. films for us? And I said, yeah, that's a great idea. I need to get out of finance and accounting and go. So you weren't going to be able to, to make that move is what you're saying? Because they yes. kind of like froze everything. Yeah. Yes. But how beautiful to have that bridge sort of offered. Yes. And I think it's great in the interview that you said, you know, I want this. I'll take this. This is what I want. I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I want that. So it worked out. Then you moved to New York. I moved to New York with two suitcases, thinking I was going to be there for three months. Okay. And I worked on these two independent short films. And I went, wow, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I like being in an office. Um, you know, maybe there's another job here for me in New York. Yeah. And um, so I interviewed at Tribeca Entertainment. Okay. And they, I actually took over for the CFO. And the, they made me commit to a two a year to two year, okay. and I just gulped and I went, okay, I think I can do this. But I really wanted to get back to LA. And, and this was at the beginning of the whole development of this. I don't even know how old the Tribeca Film Festivals are. Was oh, this? so when I started there, um, Tribeca. So Robert De Niro had this uh, vision of turning an old coffee warehouse into an office building that catered to entertainment. Yeah. Um, professionals and so Miramax was one level one floor um, you know there was the Tantliff talent agency on the one floor and then the rest was open that we rented out to creatives but when you joined it was new it was still a new concept kind it had of been it had been for around for like five okay. years and there was a post-production partnership that we had there was an independent film series mm. um, so there were yeah different different kind of initiatives and one of the first meetings I remember was going in and saying uh, can we be Tribeca Entertainment like the, have an mm, umbrella brand right. um, it, it was also included Tribeca Productions which was the film company that De Niro's partner Jane ran and we had a, a film deal with at the time uh, Universal I can't remember if it was MJ or Universal but we had okay. So I oversaw the like the business affairs yeah. um, finance for Tribeca Productions as well. Okay. So yeah, a lot of little. So still in the finance, but mm -hmm. closer to your heart and your passion as far as film. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And it was very creative because um, I like to say that my role was to manage the day to day of the businesses, yeah. so that Jane uh, could go off and make movies. So I kind of held down the fort yeah. and made sure everything was going smoothly and came up with strategy and executed on it. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like an exciting experience. So then how yeah. did that lead to your next move? Well, what happened was, so I, I had been working there for several years and every year I was thinking, this is the year I go back to California. Mm -hmm. I am not a cold weather person. And I would meet with you know Jane and De Niro's um, other uh, executive leadership team and say, they would say, what do you want to do this year, Trina? And I was like, oh, gosh, what do I want to do? What would keep me here? Yeah. Um, and there were two things that came up for me. I said, well, I'll stay for another year if they pay for my MBA or they ap agree to do a film festival. Okay. So, you know, Jane had said, we need to build our brand. How, do, how are we going to do that? And I said, I really think we could do the film festival, Jane. So. Mm -hmm. Um, sat in a you know, room with De Niro and, and her and said, hey, here's what I think the film festival should be and look like. And they were like, great, do it. So at, I was going to stay for one or the other, but they approved both. So those were my last two years at Tribeca was, you know, helping with the blueprint of the film festival and building the team yeah. and conceptualizing, you know, the different aspects of the, of the event yeah. and then executing on that. So how many years were you there total? I was at Tribeca six years. Isn't that interesting? You mm -hmm. went in thinking two was going to be a long yes. time, and then yes. you were there for six. I, yes. Exactly. And it was fantastic. I, it was a wonderful experience, and it, it really combined my love of film and my love of um, entrepreneurship. Yeah. So what happened is, I, like I said, I've been wanting to get back to California. Yeah. <laughs> and I met my husband, and I we were dating, and I said, 
I just got to tell you something. I'm going to be living in California in a year or two, and I want to start a family. And he was from the East Coast. He was living in Toronto at the time. Okay. And okay. he said, great, let's move to California. Yeah. And were you born in California? I was born in California, okay. but um, we left when I was about three. And then at seven, we moved to Hawaii. And oh. so I actually grew up in Hawaii. Nice. And that's why I, I have an aversion to cold weather. <laughs> yes. Oh. I was born in North Dakota. Oh, and that's why okay. I have an aversion to cold weather because I oh. actually had to live in it. No, um, no, yeah. no, no. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so in Hawaii, I would think also offered maybe some some spiritual things in your upbringing. I don't know. How did the, do you think that their traditions and culture impacted you as a child? Well, uh, most definitely in that there is such a reverence for nature. Yeah. And um, this idea that spirit is in is in nature and all around us, um, and the the tradition and the mm. um, all of that belief system. But for me, I was actually my family was Mormon, okay. so I was raised in the Mormon Church, going to Sunday school every week and sometimes church during the week. Yeah. And um, so I had a very uh, very I was very tied to spirit and things that were spiritual. It was just absolutely a part of, you know, my fabric and it sounds like through through religion but also through nature in Hawaii. So absolutely. the combination of both were very present in your younger years. Yes. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And yeah. then my mom so I was living at home with my parents and my dad became a marathon runner. And my mom became a feminist, and they stopped going to church. And I was like, oh, you mean I can decide whether I go to yeah. church or not? You know, this is, and I, I realized at that time, I was pretty young, but I said, wait a second. You know, my belief in a higher power yeah. is probably the most personal belief mm -hmm. that I can have. And I think I need to make that decision for myself. So that was beautiful. They gave me the freedom to decide what what path I wanted to, to yeah. go on. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a pretty big jump for parents to, yeah. to go out of a very traditional religious format to mm -hmm. yeah, being very, so that was a great example for you to be able to make some big jumps, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so, so you've, you have all this background from Hawaii, you're in New York, you're saying, I gotta get back to California, uh -huh. and you're also dating who's now your husband. Right. Mm -hmm. So then what was the big jump to get you back here? Um, well, I, I just always envisioned raising a family in California okay. and, and my, my husband, my fiance at the time agreed. Yeah. And the, the irony is that I wanted to go to Northern California. I said, I'm done with Hollywood. Okay. I just. Interesting as a creative film person. But yes. Yeah. Um, I, you know, was looking at Lucas films yeah. and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, film talent in Northern California. But I was looking, I just finished my MBA, and I was saying, you know, what else does life have to offer? Maybe yeah. it's time to explore other avenues. Yeah. And I wasn't, you know, having worked with so many egos and this, um, just seeing, you know, kind of the underbelly of the, f the film industry, I was like, time to, to move on and do something else. So my husband, though, was a creative, mm -hmm. and he was like, we we've, we've have to live in Southern California because that's how I'm going to find work. Yeah. And I also found myself pregnant. Okay. And I said, okay, maybe the right thing to do is to go to Southern California so that he can work. I'm pregnant, and all my relationships are in Southern California. So I'd have to start mm -hmm. over in Northern California, whereas it seems like this is a smarter mm -hmm. transition in yeah. Southern California. So I actually said, well, what else do I love besides film? You know, yeah. what else can I do that I love? And I thought, wow, I've always loved yoga and meditation and, you know, holistic living. And so I started researching companies in that space in Southern California. Right. And I found a company that had, was in that space, but also doing film and video. Okay. And I said, that's the company I need to work yeah. with. And so I wrote a letter and several weeks later, I got a call from the CEO. I want to meet with you. Mm -hmm. And so, I want yeah. to hear more about that big yeah. jump. <laughs> We're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay, excellent. Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. 
The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. Okay, we're back <laughs> with Trina Wyatt, and we were, I think, at a little bit of a juicy spot where you're going to be making a big move across the, the nation. Yes. 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 So tell us about that. Well, I reached out to the head of um, this company that uh, had holistic living, yoga, and wellness, and video, mm -hmm. and film, and said, I want to work with you. And the, the CEO said, I want to create a new genre of film, the inspirational film. Okay. Do you want to join me? And, and that I was said, probably yes. very new at that time. Yes. Yeah. This was in um, the summer of 2003, because I was very pregnant with my daughter when we met. Okay. And I was the first at the table. And it was really interesting. I kept saying, it's 2003 and I'm pregnant looking for a job. This shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And it actually was. And I went on job interview after job interview while I was pregnant. Uh, finally met with Film Independent. At the time it was IFP West. Okay. My daughter was three months old and I took that job and that was an interesting transition. And it was um, a good transition because it was nonprofit. Okay. You know, so it was very mission driven. It was all about independent film. And they had two primary events the Los Angeles Film Festival yeah. and the Independent Spirit Awards. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned a couple of things, um, and one was on the break actually, and it was the word trust. Uh -huh. um, are there any pearls of wisdom that you like mm -hmm. to share in regards to how to make those big jumps? Because, of course, you, mm. you had some vision of coming to California, but you didn't necessarily have a job. You didn't know exactly what you were going to do. So what, what pearls of wisdom do you share with others mm. to help them to still make those jumps and mm. take those intuitive risks? That's such a good question. And as you said earlier, my son's name is Trust. Okay. So I uh, very, you know, my husband loved the name, but I deliberately wanted that reminder to trust in the universe that uh, if you can connect with yourself and you deeply connect with yourself and acknowledge your connection to something greater on a regular basis that your intuition expands mm -hmm. and deepens mm -hmm. and uh, and and really listen yeah. and to really listen and sit with it and um, and visualize decisions. Um, and I think one of one of the challenges is that what if exercise? And you, because I'm I'm a, a anxious, sensitive person, and I can really go down the rabbit hole of, yeah. of worry and anxiety. Is okay. Well, what's the worst that can happen? Okay. Well, what if that did happen? How would I deal with that? Mm -hmm. And but really focus on what's the best that can happen. Yes. Because I do believe that when we are aligned and we are connected, that we are exhibiting the best of the universe, yes. you know, that that, is com that comes through us. Yes. And the other piece is um, operating from a place of being of service and wanting to make everyone and everything around us better, easier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, reduce suffering versus what's in it for me, you know, how do I gain? Right. So I would say the two things are, um, for, well, for me, a daily practice is absolutely essential. And then, you know, listening, listening to that inner voice, trusting it, and um, and then again, trusting the universe. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope you're willing to do the pollinating love mudra with me at the end of the yes. show because it's it's. Uh, I feel like you're you're saying the same things as far mm -hmm. as what we're doing with this mudra and reconnecting and mm. I love that you bring in mother nature into your equation mm. of trust mm. I think is what I'm, I'm hearing yes so okay. interesting things have unfolded but you're still sort of in the Hollywood scene at that point yes. and still really in the yes I am yeah. I'm in the business side of Hollywood and 
uh, you know, for the paycheck. It's yeah. like, I want, you know, we wanted our daughter to go to a private school and we wanted to have a certain lifestyle in LA and it was like, sure. we need a certain income to have that. And I just, I woke up one day, I guess it was the midlife crisis, and I went, this is not the life I wanted. Mm -hmm. I said, I've been compromising after compromise and I need a transformational experience. Yeah. So I actually was like, well, what kind of transformation, what sort of experience would help get me back on track? Yeah. And I thought, okay, either running a marathon mm. or getting certified in yoga, taking my yoga practice to the next level, okay. like something that just demanded so much commitment and dedication for me, yeah. which are those, the two, and it was physical. And so a huge surprise to myself, I found um, a wonderful yoga studio around the corner. They were offering teacher training. I signed up and this was for Kundalini Yoga, which 10 years ago was my least favorite. Yeah. Now it's all I practice. Yeah, and how did you d choose that then? It, because, well, number one, I don't think it was as common. Right. And number two, you're saying, well, it's not necessarily something that I that I really wanted to do, mm. but yet you, you were called to do that. I like. was absolutely yeah. called to do it. Yeah. I, um, well, I had a, I had a, a, a decent meditation practice. Yeah. It wasn't daily, um, but it was, it was pretty regular. And uh, my sister came to visit on vacation. Okay. And she's the one who introduced me to, to meditation. Okay. And I said, hey, let's go to this full moon meditation at my yoga studio yeah. tomorrow night. She's like, great. So we go and we end up arriving too late and they lock the door. Oh no. Oh. And the woman behind the desk said, well, we have a kundalini yoga class starting mm -hmm. in a few minutes. Right. And I didn't want to discourage my sister, who's not really a yogi. And I just turned to her and I said, what do you think? Would you like to stay for the yoga class? Yeah. And she said, yes. I would have left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we stayed for the class. Yeah. And it, it was a wonderful teacher. And I thought, wow, kundalini yoga can be like this? Yeah. This is what this is another kind of kundalini yoga experience. So, so that was kind of the first thing, and then I got some kundalini yoga DVDs, and then I found that there was a kundalini yoga studio within four blocks of my office that had a wonderful lunch, um, yeah. and so I started going there for lunch, and then it just one thing led yeah. to another, and all of a sudden they they roped me in and yeah. changed my life. Interesting how the universe works in mysterious <sighs> ways to cancel yes. us out of one thing to get us into another. Yes. Yeah. So you became certified in Kundalini Yoga, and then now are you still teaching today, or? I really I didn't get certified to teach. More t for me to take my practice. Um, yeah. I've taught two classes. Okay. <laughs> I keep thinking one day um, maybe I'll be a more dedicated teacher, yeah. but my, my plate's pretty full with um, conscious good. But I, I think the part of the story that is um, the most significant is two months into the Kundalini Yoga teacher training, um, and part of the practice is 11 minute meditation, 40 days in a row. Um, at the end of that 40 days, it, I had that transformational experience. Right. And I went into my husband and I said, listen, I don't like my job. This is not the life I wanted. In a couple months, if I don't have a new job, I'm leaving this job and I'm never again working for a paycheck. I'm only gonna work on something that I feel passionately about mm -hmm. and that I feel makes a difference in the world. Uh, we may have to sell the house and move, live yeah. in a trailer park, I don't care. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that because that's some pretty powerful stuff. I mean, to really like embody, yes. you know, that like I'm really going to do what I'm here to do. Yes. Feeling. And some, I think most of the listeners have some idea of Kundalini Yoga, but I mm -hmm. bet there's a lot of people who haven't mm. experienced it. So maybe mm. share a little bit about the life force energy and what, what you're mm. doing in Kundalini Yoga. Because yes. I think it, it would be very inspiring mm. for others to probably start trying Kundalini. Maybe do the mm. same challenge. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, the, the challenge was Kirtan Kriya. Okay. Um, but I think the the reason that I didn't like Kundalini initially is the reason it's so transformative. Mm -hmm. um, because there's some wacky stuff in Kundalini. Yeah. And what I realized is it's it's taking you out of your mind. It's yeah. taking you out of what you, you think is supposed to be yoga. Yeah. And at the same time, it is the most integrative of mind, body, spirit. It's a, a bit distractive to your mind, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. It's distractive to your mind, but also, you know, you do a lot of um, 
things for three minutes that are hard and you think I can't keep my arms up for three minutes yeah. and then you realize well no you can it's your mind playing yes. tricks with you yeah you can do this yes. and so when I realized it was me taking control of my thoughts yeah you know I my soul is in control of my mind yes then uh, it, it, it just came in a, into alignment. So I'm not somebody who says, oh, I felt the whole kundalini yeah. rush up at once, that whole energy through the chakra system. Um, it, it, was, it was just how I started looking at life. I yeah. started looking at life differently, and I, I felt so connected to myself yeah. and to something greater. Sounds like a realignment of the soul. Yes, it was. Yes, an integration, exactly. yes. Okay. <laughs> I want to hear more about that, and I, I definitely want to hear about conscious, conscious good. good. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. Okay, we're back with Trina Wyatt, and we were just, I think, about to get to the Conscious Good Network. Yes. And uh -huh. um, so you have, you know, you're in the film industry, you're living your passions in many ways but you know that there's like it sounds like there's a missing link and there's a, a disconnect so you basically walk home and say husband yes <laughs> like I'm done I'm done with my old life on to the new yes. I don't know what it's going to take but what did he say because the reaction sometimes yes even from the most enlightened can be surprising yes well he said great let's sell the house and move where shall we go <laughs> Is he clonable? <laughs> he is oh. an adventurer for sure. Wow. Well, the, the story gets better because, so I I was like, great. And yeah. we actually went to Ojai for the day. Okay. And at the end of this day, we were looking at property and my husband said, I feel really good about Ojai. And I said, well, I have this job interview in Boulder, Colorado on Friday. I'm feeling pretty good about that job interview. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did, I ended up getting the job offer to be okay. chief content officer um, at Gaia. Okay. And, you know, went out there ahead of the family, uh, was so excited. The, the night before I started, I was like, this is my dream. It's finally coming true. Yeah. From 2003, when I met with the founder, to, you know, 2014, when I actually got the job interview, it was this, this was where I was yeah. meant to be going. And I, long story short, I worked like, crazy to fit in and, and to make that role and, and everything work there. And I just felt like I was compromising again yeah. and again and again. And I said, Trina, you made a promise to yourself. You are not going to make these kind of pro compromises any longer. Yeah. And I went, talked over with my husband and he said, had everybody moved there at this point? Oh yeah. yeah. We okay, bought so a house. Yeah, okay. We moved like the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. We thought we were going to be there for the next 10 years. And, um, he said, quit. Get out of there. Start your own thing. When are you going to finally start your own thing? Do it now. Yeah. And so it was very supportive. So that's true. I, I just, I went in and I said, I don't think this is the right fit and worked out my departure. And then I took a few months to just really sit with, mm -hmm. okay, what is it that I'm meant to be doing? What does that look like? And uh, just started exploring a little bit. Yeah. And decided that I wanted my next endeavor to be something that supported the common good. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped myself and I said, no, I want it to support the conscious good. Yes, I like and that. that's when I went and registered the name and the URL and started thinking about, well, what is conscious good yeah. about? Conscious good, we, you know, started with one person helping me and just, again, scrappy, organic, Yep. Um, very, very vision driven, uh, friends and family, self-funded. There's always that temptation to, again, compromise mm. on a vision 
and fortunately I had enough people supporting me who were like we get it it's yeah. gonna take a while but organic authentic growth is absolutely essential yeah. and yeah. I tried to make it work in Boulder, Colorado, but because uh, you know, Conscious Good is, is primarily a media company, yeah. it was, you know, I needed to be back in Southern California. So after two years of trying to make it, to scale it out of Colorado, I went to my husband and I said, we've got to move back to Southern California. Wow. This time he said, I'm not moving. Oh. And okay. I went, whoa, what? And he said, I love it here. Yeah. I've never loved any place more than here. And I, and it, it was, the last two years have been really rough because I knew I had to be in Southern California. Yeah. And he did not want to come. And we really tested our marriage. Yeah. Um, the kids were happy in yeah. Colorado. Yeah. And finally he said, okay, if we have to move back to Southern California, the only place that I will consider living is Ojai. And so that's when we made it back to Ojai. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Are there any pearls of wisdom to share mm. for other couples that might be having this, um, you know, I think it's just a natural process, right? Yes. But I would imagine that it took a lot of communication and just feeling into it, but any pearls of wisdom for others who might be feeling like, I'm ready to make this move, but my spouse isn't? Uh, How to work through that? I know it's very individual. It is very individual. I mean, for me, I really had to way separating and not fulfilling on the vision of conscious good right and i really felt like this was my life life's work mm -hmm. um that realizing the vision of conscious good is why i'm here and i wanted to be able to show my children that you know create that vision you know yeah. listen to that voice and do what you're meant to do that only you can do yeah and I know my husband really respected that and that's one of the reasons that he was always attracted to me is that I when I knew what I wanted I like stuck with it yeah. and um, but he was in a place where he wasn't really sure what he was supposed to be doing and where he needed to be with his life and yeah. so um, I said to him I said well I need to do this you need to figure out what what your version of this yeah. is and I want to support you in what that looks like and maybe that means we don't live together for a yeah. while and maybe that means that we have to figure out how to separate yeah. and parent separately yeah but if we look at our lives as uh, is so unique that we have a unique opportunity and gifts and talents and that the universe is conspiring to support us yes. in, in the highest expression of ourselves. And we trust that and we know that mm -hmm. to our core and we want that for somebody else. Yeah. And I think, I think that's one of the reasons I married my husband to begin with is that I had that sense. Yeah. We knew that we would support each other's personal growth at all costs, even at a cost to our own selfish desires. Yeah, wow. Well, I think there was, yeah, some really great pearls in there um, about communication, but also about really releasing the pressure of having to make all the decisions and asking the universe to support, you know, what is for yes. our highest good. And it sounds like that's part of what kept you guys together. Now, Ojai, mm. I haven't spent a lot of time there, mm. but it's, it's magical from mm. what I understand. But it's it still far from Hollywood or m perhaps what might have been perceived mm -hmm. as like the place to still be for what you were doing with the Conscious Good Network. Yeah. So how did how did that all work out that you were able to still stay in Ojai and build this incredible platform? It's a community of people who are working in conscious media in yeah. Ojai. So yeah. a lot of people who uh, you know love visual storytelling and don't want to work mm -hmm. in the Hollywood system or live in Los Angeles. And so there's a really beautiful community in Ojai for that. Yeah. And again, it's it's really close. I I do foresee a time as as we launch some new initiatives, where I need to be in Los Angeles um, on a more consistent, regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a nice transition for my family and my my kids. And and you know, again, speaking of how the universe conspires to help, you know, everybody's virtual these days. Yeah. Everybody is, and I I don't prefer it. I I want to be working and having this you know, connection with yeah. people and with my team. 
Um, so we, we have to go out of our way to, to make it work, um, to, yeah. to you know compensate for the, the virtual office. Yeah, now there's lots of really great things on the Conscious Good Network. Mm. I, I've dabbled in it, I've, I've signed up for it. Ah. Um, anything from meditation videos to, you know, what, what would people go to it for? Because it looks like just a, a really amazing um, set of, of, of videos. I know it's about storytelling, mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit more, like, why would someone go to it and what can mm. they get from it? Mm. Well, one of the, the primary tenets of Conscious Good is we, we believe that what you watch has an impact on your psyche and well-being. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I gave away my TV in 2005, and my life has been incredibly peaceful ever since. It, it is, but sometimes we want to be entertained. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we want to be inspired. And we don't want to have to um, completely derail our mm. practice yeah. <laughs> and compromise like yeah. what we know uh, to be healthy, to be entertained, or to be inspired. So um, there's inspirational stories that if you're... If you're looking to find, you know, what is my path? We, we have some beautiful stories of people who listened to their inner voice mm -hmm. and did some extraordinary things. Yeah. Um, and just, we have pearls of wisdom, you know, from like Brene Brown, where she's talking and there's animation to, to about empathy versus sympathy. Okay. Um, and yes, there's meditation. Um, I believe there's, a practice for everyone, um, and that every everyone should have a daily practice that helps them integrate mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. So whether that's surfing, you know, you're in nature, mm -hmm. you're connecting to something greater, and you're connecting to yourself, and it's physical, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's, so yeah, there's something for everyone. We yeah. have more playlists that are coming out. Um, eventually we'll be offering long form film um, but yeah, the, the other two primary um, tenets are that we want to increase the audience and accessibility of quality conscious media. So we want you, if you're feeling like you want to tune in and be entertained and, and relax or inspired, that you don't, you feel that there's a place where you can go. Yeah. A trusted place where I know everything that I is going to be high quality and it's, it's going to make me feel connected. Yeah. So we and want and you that. almost don't even have to need to filter through it because it is so aligned and so all about consciousness. Yeah, mm. it makes it very easy. Yes, so thank you. Um, and one of the ways besides the website that we're getting the content out is we have a studio series. So mm -hmm. we find the best in conscious cinema. We work with the filmmakers to get mm -hmm. it to yoga and meditation studios around uh, the globe. Right. And we just had a great film last month, Free Trip to Egypt, and we screened it prior yeah. to the theatrical release. Yes, and I just heard yeah. about that. I have to, I have yeah. to check that one out. Oh, it's so yeah. beautiful. It's really beautiful. So, so that's how we're getting the, the um, quality conscious content to a larger audience. Okay. And then the third tenant is that we are supporting the creation of the quality conscious media. So okay. supporting the creators because as, you know, as a creative and your you, you need so much help and support, whether it's distribution, marketing, yeah. camera, sound, mm -hmm. and working with people who are like-minded and who are like, yes, you know, we want to elevate consciousness too, and we want to use our talents and skills, and let's collaborate and create something yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So we want to support the creators, and that's what we do with our Creators Network. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yes, I love that. <laughs> well, the next question seems actually quite obvious, but mm. I'm going to ask it anyway. Yes. So how do you see yourself and the conscious good pollinating the planet with love? Mm. Oh, my goodness. I, first of all, the intent right there yeah. is so beautiful because it, it, we can. And everything, every choice that we make throughout the day, it can be one of increasing love mm. or not. Really, yeah. there's always uh, always the response that is the loving response, and in every interaction that we have mm -hmm. throughout the day, every touch point yeah. um, is the opportunity to reinforce love. Yeah. So um, I, I would say I don't know if there's anything that we're doing that isn't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. That's why I, I think it's a little bit obvious, but yes. yeah. Well, um, but would love to continue to support, you know, your initiative yeah. and and obviously the beautiful mudra and yeah. and you know. Yeah. Now, how can people get to you? Let's give them the website, and of course, okay. I'll put it in the links below. But, yeah. Um, yeah. How do they find you? You have Facebook. You have Instagram. Yes, have we do. Websites. And consciousgood.com. 
and uh, for creators, uh, our creators network is on Mighty Networks. Okay, so great. if you go to MightyNetworks.com and yeah. you look for Conscious Good, but yeah, we're we're in all those places. And okay. most importantly, uh, we would love for people to bring Conscious Cinema to their communities. If you go to a yoga and you know yeah. a yoga studio yes. owner, um, you know, have them sign up for our monthly studio series and. and you Connecting community yeah, around this great film. Yeah, that's a great a great thing because I think there's a lot of yoga studios that are looking for content, mm -hmm. and this is a great way for them to, to get it. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Okay, yeah. so would you be willing to do the mudra? Yes, I will. Okay, so it's it's very simple. Mm -hmm. It only requires four things: mm -hmm. your heart, your hands, your eyes, and most importantly, the intention to give and receive unconditional love. Mm. So all we do is we take our hands, put our fingertips together put our wrists together, and then we formed our little lotus flower, and mm -hmm. then we put it to our fourth chakra, and I like to make contact with the thumbs and the heart, the breastbone here. Mm -hmm. And then I usually close my eyes just for a few seconds, and I think about something, someone, sometimes a place that just makes me feel bliss and love and joy. And I bring that feeling deep in my heart. And then I start to put some of it into the little lotus flower. You can put a lot or a little. And oftentimes you can start to feel a little bit of warmth in between your hands. I even like to envision that little ball of light. And whenever you feel like you have it in there, open your eyes. Mm. And then we're going to share it with each other and everyone else. Mm. So we just start by slowly raising our hands. And our middle fingers open, our index fingers open, our thumbs open. And we've got that little ball of light that's turning into a bunch of sprinkles, and we're going to blow it to each other. And then we're going to put it out into the universe mm. for everyone else. And we're going to come back to Namaste, Namaste, which is, I honor the divine in you. I honor the divine in you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for the work that you're doing, yeah, Beth. Thank you. Incredible. Thank you. So <laughs> that has been, yeah, something really... Um, interesting that the universe has asked me to be the vehicle for mm. and so we are pollinating the planet with love and I can't wait to see how we may be able to pollinate together in miraculous ways yes. so thank you so much for being on the show well, today thank you for having me yeah and I, wonderful. Look, I look forward to pollinating in the future yeah <laughs> all right okay well wishing you bliss so that you too can help in pollinating the planet mm. with love Thank you. Who's up next when you like my page, Beth Bell Live, and join me each week as I invite a new guest into the mobile recording studio to help in pollinating the planet with love.